Good morning, here is the news at 10. First, the highlight. Lagos State Government assures residents of more grassroots-based projects, flags of construction of 1.3-kilometer road in Ijede. Federal Government Labour set to resume minimum wage talks as Finance Minister submits template to President Tinubu. On the foreign scene, Israeli strike in United Nations shelter in Gaza claims about 30 lives. And in sport, Super Eagles camp in Uyo bubbles as all players arrive ahead World Cup qualifiers against South Africa, Benin Republic. Now the details, I am Dele Agadumo. In a bid to continue to bring infrastructural development to the grassroots and to fulfill Governor Badjit's royalist mandate of making Lagos State a 21st century economy, Lagos State government has commenced the construction of a 1.3 kilometer road in Ayuba Bashoro Street, Iluwaju community area of Ijede local, co local council development area, Ikorodu. The project, which is intended to improve road networks in the community and to help reduce travel time for vehicles and humans, was flagged up by the special advisor to the Governor on Rural Development, Nuruddin Yekini Agbaji, at the project site. Yekini Agbaji said, The road construction is one of the numerous projects that Governor Mr. Governor has earmarked for rural communities in fulfillment of the themes plus agenda of his administration. He reiterated that the construction of roads in these communities is a strategic effort by the state government to engender ease of movement and to reduce rural urban migration. The commissioner urged residents of this community to take ownership of the project, which is scheduled to be completed in 12 months. The Lagos State Christian Pilgrims Welfare Board, LSCPWB, has concluded the second and final phase of the medical and administrative screening exercise for the year 2024 Easter intending pilgrims. The screening exercise held at the Chapel of Christ the Light was done in collaboration with the Nigeria Christian Pilgrim Commission, NCPC, and other relevant agencies of government in charge of verifying traveling documents. According to the board secretary, Yutundi Buffet, the medical screening exercise was necessary to ensure the physical fitness of intending pilgrims. Buffet, who was represented by the board's deputy director of operations, Kendi Omishuri, said the state government wants to be sure that all the intending pilgrims traveling for the pilgrimage have all requisite traveling documents with verifiable medical history to embark on the journey. The board secretary also stated that the screening exercise would assist the medical team to take along appropriate medications that would meet the medical needs of the intending pilgrims. By your state governor, Shane Makili has raised concern over illegal mining, banditry, kidnapping and other vices in the Okiugu area in particular and the state in general. He made this known in Ibadan while playing host to the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Force Criminal Investigation Department and Southwest Zone, Abiodun Alavi. Makili, who was represented by the Deputy Governor, Bayo Lawal, expressed concern over the menace in the region and other parts of the state. He said while the illegal miners were depleting the resources of the state through nefarious acts, kidnappers and perpetrators of other acts were making the affected areas unsafe for the dwellers. Speaking earlier, Alabi said his visit aimed at interfacing with the police and the stakeholders on the security challenge and proffering solutions. Meanwhile, 20 people have been confirmed dead from the collapsed mine in the Gokago community in the Shiroro district of Niger State, while 14 more people are still trapped and awaiting rescue. Commissioner of Police, Niger Command, Shawulu Damaman, during his visit to the mine site, said operators of the collapsed mining site operated without regard to safety measures and the welfare of the laborers. 
He said no ambulance or equipped medical kits were present, as well as personnel to care for laborers in terms of emergencies, adding that a formal investigation into the accident has commenced. Spokesman of Niger State Emergency Service Agency, Hosseini Ibrahim, has said one person was confirmed dead, several others injured, while 30 persons, including the site manager, were trapped as the mining pit collapsed. The incident, which happened on Monday, was believed to have been caused by the torrential rains which softened the soil. Now to the rest of the stories. Negotiation between the federal government and organized labor is expected to continue today in anticipation of the Minister of Finance, Wali Edun, submitting the salary template to President Bolatinovo. The Tripartite Committee on National Minimum Wage on Wednesday adjourned the wage talks to allow the government team to provide a template as directed by the President. Tinubu had on Tuesday directed the finance minister to present the cost implications for a new minimum wage within two days. The president gave the order at a meeting with the government negotiation team led by the secretary to the government of the federation, George Akume, at the presidential villa in Abuja. The organized labor suspended its indefinite strike on Tuesday after reaching an agreement with the federal government that negotiations should continue daily and the parties on Wednesday decided to await the outcome of the presidential template before proceeding with further negotiations. The senators passed for a second reading a bill seeking the establishment of the National Animal Husbandry and Ranchers Commission. The proposed law sponsored by Senator Titus Tatenga Zam is aimed at addressing the frequent clashes between farmers and herders in some parts of the country. Leading the debate on the general principles of the bill, Zam urged his colleagues to pass the bill, saying the proposed National Animal Hus Husbandry and Ranches Commission is for the management, preservation and control of ranches throughout Nigeria. The majority of the lawmakers in support of the bill maintained that when passed, it would provide for the establishment of a commission that would address the issues arising from the conflicts between the herders and farmers. The bill was passed after it was put to voice vote by the Senate President, Gosnola Wabio, and referred to the committees on agriculture, judiciary and legal matters with a mandate to work on it and revert to the committee of the whole. And now to foreign news. An Israeli airstrike on a UN school packed with hundreds of displaced people in central Gaza has killed at least 27 people. The Israel Defense Forces, IDF, in a statement said jets had conducted a precise strike on a Hamas compound embedded inside an Anwar school in the area of Nuzrat. It said it had killed Hamas and Islamic Jihad terrorists who took part in the October 7 attack on southern Israel, when around 1,200 people were killed and 251 others were taken hostage. The IDF said it had taken steps before the airstrike to reduce the risk of harming uninvolved civilians. The Hamas media office has accused Israel of committing a horrific massacre rejecting Israel's claims that the UN school had hidden a Hamas command post. According to the Hamas-run health ministry, at least 36,580 people have been killed in Gaza since the October 7 attack. In our sport, Super Eagles goalkeeper Madika Okoye joined his teammates late Wednesday night in Uyo, the Aquabom state capital, for the crucial 2026 World Cup qualifiers against South Africa and Benin Republic. Okoye's arrival means coach Finiti George has the full complement of his 23-man squad for the crucial qualifiers against South Africa on Friday and Benin Republic on Monday. Okoye was among eight players left stranded in Lagos and Abuja on Monday following the nationwide strike by the Nigeria Labour Congress, which grounded flight operations nationwide. 
The Confederation of Africa Football has denied reports that the 2025 Africa Cup of Nations, which was held in Morocco, has been postponed, or which will be held in Morocco, has been postponed. This is in the wake of viral reports claiming the body had pushed the tournament forward by six months to the start of 2026 due to a clashing timeline with the expanded 32-team FIFA Club World Cup which will be held in the U.S. from June 15 to July 13, 2025. CAF said via its ex-handle that reports on AFCON 2025 are untrue, stating that its executive committee will meet, deliberate, and make a decision on the AFCON 2025 dates and will thereafter issue an official statement on the matter. CAF, however, did not state when the executive committee will meet just as the 2025 tournament is yet to have a date. And that ends our news at 10. Just before we go, always slow down at road junctions, intersections and pedestrian crossings. You can follow us and like our various social media platforms, X Traffic Radio 961, Instagram Lagos Traffic Radio 961, Subscribe and watch our news and programs live on YouTube at Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website at trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that the Sunwall Administration organized a forum for women across the 57 local governments and local council development areas in the state with a view to enhancing their productivity and economic growth? You can get more details on the Lagos State Government website. To end the news and the highlights of the major stories, in a bid to continue to bring infrastructure development to the grassroots and to fulfill Governor Babajit Sanwolo's mandate of making Lagos State a 21st century economy, Lagos State government has commenced the construction of a 1.3 kilometer road in Ayuba Bashoro Street, a Lukwedu community area of Ijade LCDA, Ikorodu. Negotiation between the federal government and organized labor is expected to continue today in anticipation of the Minister of Finance, Wali Edu, submitting the salary template to President Bolatinovo. We also told you that an Israeli airstrike on a UN school packed with hundreds of displaced people in central Gaza has killed at least 27 people. And in sports, Super Eagles goalkeeper Madaka Okoye joined his teammates late Wednesday night in Uyo, the acquired from state capital, for the crucial 2026 World Cup qualifiers against South Africa and the New Republic. For contact to the newsroom, send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. That ends the news broadcast compiled by Abiola Fabolagun. I am Dele Agadumo. Good morning. Thank you for listening.